Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Phoebe Gordon from the UC Cooperative Extension Orchard Systems Advisor in Madera County. Wanted to talk about potassium nutrient management, particularly in almonds and pistachios. Fertilizing uh, tree crops with potassium doesn't tend to differ too much across tree species. So you will be adding different amounts. So pistachios, for instance, need about 29 pounds of potash per 1,000 pounds of nuts. Mm -hmm. Almonds need about 85 to 95 per 1,000 pounds of kernels. And you need about 30 pounds of potash for uh, pistachios and about 36 for almonds to supply tree growth. So the way that you tell if your trees are deficient is through your regular July leaf tissue analyses. It's important you do those, not the early sampling ones, because those early sampling ones only try to predict your July nitrogen leaf levels. And so in general, you always want to try to diagnose a deficiency before you see symptoms. And so in almonds, uh, potassium leaf deficiency symptoms look like that, that Viking's prowl. And in pistachios, you can get pale leaves during the summer um, and yellow tips that move progressively inwards. So fertilization, uh, in general, you always want to treat potassium like nitrogen in that you add what was removed every year with the yield. And that's because, because potassium is stored in the soil, if you get a really severe deficiency, it can take some time to recover and you don't ever want to get to that point. When you put that on is dependent on you. You can do those bands in the fall with uh, potassium sulfate if you'd like. That's fine. You can fertigate. And so fertigation has the potential to move the potassium deeper in the soil because it's already solubilized, and so it moves deeper. There's not really a difference between what's available to the tree when you're looking at solubility um, because, again, when you have a potassium fertilizer, it breaks down, and then it binds loosely onto the cation exchange capacity of the soils. And so, you know, if you're adding something that's a lower solubility, like potassium sulfate, well, it, it, it'll break down over time and so it will be available to the tree. If you have a sandy soil, though, you want to make sure that you don't add on a bunch at once. You want on a farm call once where someone was in a really sandy soil, they wanted to build up that soil with potassium before the tree started to bear heavily, and they actually induced a magnesium deficiency. And so um, you just want to, I would say, spoon feed in a really sandy soil. If you are in a potassium fixing soil, which tends to be found in the southern San Joaquin Valley as well as on the eastern side of the valley, that's a soil where potassium actually becomes fixed to clay and so it will be unavailable for uptake when the plants need it. And so it's probably best to only fertilize with what the trees need in the season and make sure that potassium is landing in the wetted zone. You can band as well as fertigate you, the, the trick with banding is that you add so much potassium in a very narrow zone that the potassium fixation capacities of the soil become overwhelmed and then there's something that's available left for the tree. Um, but fertigation works as well. Thank you, Phoebe. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.